Good afternoon to you. Mark Sabbath, HurricaneTrack.com here. This is the afternoon update for Hurricane Ian. Uh, it is Monday, the 26th of September. Uh, we got to talk about what's happening with the structure of this system. As you can clearly see, getting better organized is not going to be too long now that it's going to be developing a well-defined eye. And I'm going to show you some very useful information from the National Weather Service and the National Hurricane Center site. And then we're going to talk about impacts and finally, our project, you know, what do we do? What is Hurricane Track all about? What is the Hurricane Landfall Project and how can it help you? And then uh, also in that, that same breath, how you can help us to do that. Kind of that Jerry Maguire line. Remember that? Help me help you. Well, that's what I'm here to do. All right. Uh, first, let's go back to the National Hurricane Center homepage there. Uh, 11 a.m. advisory on Ian at the time. 80 mile per hour winds, 980 on the pressure. And going back and looking at the satellite imagery definitely has that classic look to it overall, winding up over the very warm waters of the Caribbean Sea. The 80 mile per hour winds are confined to this area right in here somewhere. Uh, tropical storm force winds out from there. I haven't read the actual radius of all those winds, but it's, it's growing. It's getting stronger and it's going to continue to do so all the way up until it crosses over western Cuba and emerges into southeast Gulf of Mexico and then eventually makes its way up somewhere into this area over the next two days. And it is going to bring a prolonged, very destructive storm surge, wind and rain event. And as I have said the last couple of updates, we need to ignore the category almost completely. Don't worry about what number it has been given. I want you to think about the impacts. And these impacts are going to be severe and in some cases catastrophic and it is impossible to know exactly who, what neighborhood, and to what extent, but it is going to be a broad area from the Keys, if we're talking about U.S. impacts here, the Keys all the way up uh, and a good majority of the lower peninsula, probably the lower um, two-thirds of the entire peninsula, and maybe even more than that, depending on where this ends up. But it is also impacting our friends in Jamaica, just a little bit, some of these extreme outer bands, and the Cayman Islands as well, and all of that will be spreading up towards western Cuba, and then again eventually up towards this region in the coming days. All right, back to the Hurricane Center site. This is very important. All of this information in here, gift wrapped, uh, served to you on a silver platter, whatever the expression you want to use, there it is. Very helpful information. Everything from the wind speed probabilities, when those winds would arrive, histories, watches and warnings, maps, you name it, key messages just to summarize everything. And extremely important, the Peak Surge experimental product. This is their Peak Surge, peak surge graphic. Very easy to understand these different areas that are expected to see the uh, up to 10 feet uh, and then from 4 to 7 feet, 5 to 8, etc., so forth and so on. Very easy, very easy to see this. And then you can just go back to that main page there and access other graphics about rainfall. Um, and then it's nice too, you don't have to go back. I just had it extended too far up. You can just click on whatever, these little thumbnails, very easy to understand. Now, this right here, let me go back to their homepage. If you're on the National Hurricane Center homepage, I'm gonna show you something that is very, very helpful. I don't wanna say it's life-changing, but it could be extremely useful for you when you're trying to figure out through all of this, everybody's talking to you, everybody's asking questions, you're reading all kinds of stuff on social media, what's going to happen where I live? That's what I want you to ask yourself. What's going to happen where I live? This tool right here can help you with that. Right there, National Weather Service Local Products. You want to click on that from the National Hurricane Center homepage, and that will take you to this landing page where you want these right here. This will take you right to their local homepage. As an example, if I click on Tampa Bay, that takes you to the Tampa weather page, like their landing page for National Weather Service Tampa. You want threats and impacts, and that tells you when it was updated. All right, so this is important. You click on threats and impacts, and here you go. All kinds of information, uh, local products tailored for that area and you can click on different tabs up here that gives you all kinds of information from satellite local products radar so forth and so on 
including the outlook here, which gives you a nice overall broad view of what's happening in the tropics as a whole. Very, very important here. This can really help you to understand what could be coming your way. The biggest one is the hurricane local statement. That's under local products. It is a text product. You got to read. You got to read it yourself. Lots of good information in here boiled down more towards your area. All right. So a really helpful set of tools for you from the National Hurricane Center homepage. Again, just to recap, you go to hurricanes.gov or nhc.noaa.gov. You scroll down a little bit under the EN part, click on National Weather Service Local Products, Threats and Impacts, and you are good to go. All right. And even if you end up right on their homepage, um, oftentimes they will have the uh, hurricane local statement listed in here. Uh, like if you click on the map somewhere, you live somewhere near Tampa, you click on that and it goes to that landing page, Hurricane Watch, Storm Surge Watch. Just look for the information from here. Very helpful as you go forward. What about the modeling? Everybody's looking at the models. I get it. Um, I have showed the consensus aids recently, but I do want to show you the latest GFS because we're getting into that time frame now where we're getting much closer to impacts for Florida. And I got to be honest, the 12Z GFS, by the way, what does that mean? 12Z, what is that? That is when it is initialized. Z is Zulu time. We also call that UTC or universal time coordinate. So 12Z means the model started getting initialized at 8 a.m. Eastern time. They run these big synoptic model runs at 8 a.m. and uh, 8 p.m. and 2 a.m. and 2 p.m. Um, four different times throughout the day. So uh, 12Z is initialized at 8 a.m. Eastern time, just so you know. So what does it show? This is, first of all, the 10 meter wind. So, you know, we'll just call it 35 feet just to round it up. 10 meter wind. And as you know, there's a lot of buildings in these areas that are way taller than 10 meters. A lot of houses too. All right, so 10 meter wind and the mean sea level pressure, MSLP. All right, so let's just move this out into time. After it crosses Cuba, it gets into the Gulf of Mexico and it just lunges like that towards Tampa Bay. We have wondered when this was going to happen. It's not set in stone. This is 90 hours out. Still room for things to change, but it makes that turn there. The trough helps to just kind of bring it in and it just parks right over the west coast of Florida. I cannot overemphasize or overstate enough what a massive problem this is going to be. And even look over here. What is this nonsense right there? Well, that's 40 mile per hour wind piling up on the east side of Florida. What is going on? This is a large hurricane. It's going to slow down and become from a potential Cat 4 with a very well oiled engine to like a Ferrari. Now, this is a little bit macabre, but follow me here. Imagine a Ferrari that's perfectly timed. Everything's perfect, right? and it's zooming along at 180 miles an hour, and it has a wreck. Let's say there's no driver, let's just at least do that. And it just scatters everywhere. All that energy gets dispersed because of that accident, whatever it hit. The same type of thing with this hurricane. As it comes in, assuming it makes it to category four as forecast, that core is like a Ferrari. But when it slows down and encounters things that messes it up, like the Ferrari having the accident, it hits a at 180 miles an hour, you hit just a cinder block, and it's just pieces of Ferrari everywhere. The energy gets dispersed. That's what's going to happen with Ian. The energy is going to spread out over a larger area. The wind field will expand, and now you have a much larger area of ocean that has been put into motion, and that is a huge problem. And then on top of that, the rainfall, these bands just rotating around over Florida, potentially for days, plural. So this is not at all something that needs to be taken lightly. This is no joke. This is not being hyped up for clicks, views, or any other agenda. This is as real as we have seen it in a long, long time for the Sunshine State. Period, plain, and simple. Um, and even if it were to come in and move more to the north, uh, Tampa Bay still gets that prolonged surge. Big time surges down here. 
from Sarasota, Venice, south to Fort Myers, Naples, and of course the Keys, all right? It is going to be bad for a lot of people. We're talking millions of people. And then this is really interesting here, this northeast wind coming in, the pressure gradient, the difference in pressure over distance is very tight here. you got this high pressure building in up here, very low pressure down here. The difference between the two, we could have tropical storm conditions more than 200 miles away on the east coast of Florida and even into Georgia and maybe lower parts of South Carolina's coast. This is absolutely just like, wow. This is the, I said it earlier today, it only takes one. This could very well be that one. And I need you guys to really take this seriously. Do what you can to save yourselves, save as much of your property as you can if you're in these areas where that saltwater flooding could happen. But then there's the freshwater flooding. It is going to truly be um, potentially catastrophic for parts of Florida. Now, the water temperatures, don't let these blues fool you. Look at the legend. That's still 28.3 Celsius or higher. Uh, so that's about 82 Fahrenheit. The water temperatures all through here, especially from Tampa south, well warm enough to support a very intense hurricane, no doubt. And it's not just the intensity, it's the amount of water vapor and the overall rainfall that this thing's going to dump. We're going to have river flooding. Um, I mean, it is just going to be a massive, massive problem. So looking at the track map, this is from our Hurricane Track Insider site. Our supporters, our patrons that help to fund this project have access to this. But what I want to do is show you the track and then what we are going to do. I'm going to go into that part of this presentation now. So we have, let me go over here to our uh, poster that was created here from our good friend Tim. The Hurricane Landfall Project, we started this in 04 as a way to remotely capture the impacts from tropical storms, hurricanes, and now even winter storms, spring severe weather on the Great Plains, and even the desert monsoon using the equipment for that. But hurricanes are the main forte. That's what I do. That's what I went to college for, uh, into earth science. My degree is geography with a focus on hurricanes, mainly their impacts. And that is the key word here, the impacts. So we have all this equipment that we set up, uh, 15 live cameras right now, these uh, high uh, quality weather stations, and a really great crew of people that help us to set all of this up. So where are we going to start? I'll show you. Thanks for asking. Um, we're going to begin, I'm going to leave Orlando here in just a little bit with my colleague Matt. And we're going to go all the way down here to Key West. Yes, it's a long way, but it is important. I'm going to put a camera out here uh, at the southernmost point, And then we're going to make our way out of the Keys and get over here to the Naples area where we will spend tonight. Then tomorrow, all up along the coast, all the way up to Cedar Key, it's just off the map here, we will set out these specialized live cams and specialized GoPro cameras that we have um, acquired, many of those through our crowdfunding, that uh, will record, in some cases, for 36 hours in 720, and we can even set the 4K newer GoPros to go on timers to capture about 11 hours or so of 4K video when we think the best time slot would be. In addition, I'm going to go back to that poster real quick because I'm a weather geek at heart. I really like studying the weather and what it's doing. This right here, this weather station, is very important to our set of tools. We brought three of them with us. These will give us the wind in real time and the pressure, real time updating every second. And then we will take one minute peaks and one minute, five minute, 10 minute averages. All of that will be on this interactive tracking map. This is what a lot of our cameras that are permanent, this is what they look like. You know, just back it out a little bit. These are cameras at our supporters' houses. These are real people all around the country and even internationally. And uh, we even have some up here. This is one in Jacksonville at the Herd residence. Um, uh, and we really, really, it takes a minute sometimes for Nest to populate, especially on our slow Wi-Fi here at the hotel. That's okay. A lot of people on the internet these days. This is going to make me look bad, isn't it? Come on. There it is. I knew it could do it. <laughs> so there's the one in Orange Park. Um, there's just a lot of people hitting the net down here. Trust me. 
And then we have some down here, a pair of them from Jeff, known Jeff a long time. And these are permanent. These are ones that we have set up all the time from our members. The ones we're going to set up, again, are going to blanket this area all through here and might even put some inland to capture the inland uh, impacts. And so they appear on the map. We have a nice dashboard that they're all right there, even individually. We have Discord as part of this whole project. And you can see that over here. Let me take my writing away. And this is all done through this, if I can click on it, and that is Patreon. You go over to Patreon, uh, you look for Hurricane Track, that's us right there. Look for that, and you know it's us. And you can support it, be a part of it. The $4 a month uh, is the Discord, uh, but the $10 a month and up, you choose the level that's right for you. As they say, cancel any time. I would hope that people want to stick around and help the sustainability of this project over the long term. We do a lot of off-season stuff. And we're all about education. We have podcasts. We have, you know, the winter storms, the spring stuff, and then it's hurricane season again before you know it. So that's how you do it. You can get the Discord app. You get the Patreon app. You join up. You see what's going on. You interact with us, and you become a part of it. And there's nothing else like it. The power of social media, the power of the Internet. I know there's a lot of negative and uh, whatnot, but this is a really good use of it. Um, so there you go. That's how you get to be a part of it. And by the way, we will be doing our part. It's not all about trying to, to raise money. We have a public-facing YouTube stream that will begin later this afternoon. That's always going to be out there. We always do that. And uh, that'll be at my YouTube channel. So don't forget, subscribe, like, and share, as they say. And the biggest one of all, they got a little bell on there. That's a notification button. You want to be notified, especially during this event, when we go live, when I post a video. That's how you do it. you got to hit that bell there uh, so you get notified when we're doing what we're doing. All right? So that is the game plan. That's the look at what's going on with Ian. Uh, just a, a very stressful situation coming up for Florida. I get it. We're down here to help and do the best we can. We have a great team, a great bunch of people helping us out from all over the world. Would love to have you as a part of it. And we'll do what we can to contribute back to the science, the awareness, and the overall educational aspects of dealing with hurricanes. All right, let me get this online for you. I'll be back this afternoon once we go live, probably around 5 p.m. Eastern, if not before. I'm Mark Suddeth again for Hurricane Track. We'll see you once we're live later today.